So the Bucks in Bloomington, and they were not alone. Welcome, everyone, to this week's edition of Buckeye Football Weekly. Head coach Jim Trestle joining us now. And not alone because you get a great crowd to travel over there, as usual. Bucks show up in Bloomington to cheer on their team. And also, as usual, you have an honorary captain to help you get things kicked off. Well, in both counts, it was a great situation. Uh, Pepper Johnson being the guy and with Deontay on our team and mm -hmm. you know Pepper carrying those big Super Bowl rings he's got five of them oh. and uh, it was impressive for our kids and, and he talked a lot about what Ohio State meant to him and then you could see the fans mm -hmm. they were yelling all afternoon about what Ohio State means to them. Did they mention anything about what a pitfall scenario this could be? Did you talk to them about that Memorial Stadium? You know we've been talking all week about it but uh, Pepper just said, hey, there's no excuses. You better go out and beat this team. And, and uh, he, he kind of gave it to him straight. Well, you get started off here with an Indiana punt and Ohio State, or an Ohio State punt, I should say, and an Indiana muff and good things happening on special teams early. Well, that was a good thing. And, and uh, you know, we made some plays on special teams today. We had a couple of problem ones. But uh, here you see uh, Troy stepping up and, and uh, moving forward, making some yards, and thought Troy did a good job all afternoon making decisions. Yeah, pick up a four, and then he hooks up. You know, that's a simple slant pattern, just yep. broken. Yep. He, Santonio Holmes could do something with the ball afterwards, and good protection, and, and uh, good job getting on top. Yeah, 23 yards complete and a 7 nothing lead. Take the crowd out early, make them sit on their hands from the start. You know, it. it uh, our crowd took them out, and our defense yeah. took them out, and of course getting that first score, and and uh, our defense did a good job of handling the run the whole day long and really handling the tempo of the game. Yeah, Ashton Bode was thinking six there on that, and then uh, A.J. Hawk, the clobber, 13 yards. Antonio uh, uh, Pittman here yep. rips this off. Well, this was a good one to, to get, get the uh, rushing game going, and here they're coming on a blitz, and, and uh, good job by Troy making some big plays uh, on the option game and, and he rushed for I think 60 some yards which that's a great compliment to the rest of the group and, and uh, he finds Santonio who does a great job after catch and, and we're moving the football down the field. How tough is that? Yeah, Santonio gets <laughs> after it. He can play no question about it. 11 yards complete there and then this has got to be disappointing here you go back to that well with the slant to Holmes again. Yeah it, unfortunately uh, we had the uh, turnover here and uh, instead of being on the own, our own one going in and now they're 65 yards differently but uh, our defense uh, you know keeps playing. Well that they'll have to Anthony Schlegel here big pile in the middle loss of two yards. They had trouble uh, running the ball all day long and here they went uh, with the field goal after the great field position and good job by our defense hold them to three. Yeah Joe Kleinsmith with a 39 yard field goal and it is 7-3 the count now Santonio Holmes is going to be the recipient of this Troy Smith pass as well and turn something into it. Well, there was great protection, and Santonio came all the way from the other side, shallow across the field, and good patience by Troy. And, and then here we go with Antonio Pittman, uh, who rushed for 133 today and, and uh, continues to be very solid. Stan White does a great job with good protection. Thought Stan might get in the end zone there, but uh, we ended up going with the option uh, to get down in there and score. Nine yards complete, and then Troy Smith, the keep, and in the surest way. Yeah, good looking play, and, and Troy is a dangerous guy down there with the option in the red zone. Yeah, eight rushing touchdowns on the year for him, and uh, I don't know if you want to set a number on what he can do when, before you start the season, but certainly eight's pretty impressive. Sure is, and here he finds Ryan Hamby for a, a good gainer on a crossing route, and, and we're moving down the field, and then he'll find Teddy again right up the seam off of the box look and good concentration by Teddy getting the football down there inside the 10. Yeah, back to back 27 yard plays for the Bucks, and as you go inside the 10 you kick the field goal. Josh Houston 23 yards it's a 17 to 3 game. Yeah we really would have liked to get seven there and and they didn't get it done but but did get three and again here comes the defense they had they were swarming all over the place the entire afternoon. Well, short of first down, the Hoosiers are there and then back on offense. And uh, you like to get it in his hands any way possible because that can happen. Well, that's right. You know, slip screen, uh, any way we can, punt return, kickoff return, deep routes. Uh, you know, Teddy Ginn's a good football player. 17 to 3 as you head towards the half. And uh, a road game is going to test some composure now and again, and you're going to get that in this game. Now, especially when you make the mistake like we did. We're down there getting ready to score and make it, uh, what, 14 nothing. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we turn around the other way. But you know, our guys bounced back, and right there at the end on that last drive, it would have been nice to get at least a field goal. When the field goal went off a little bit to the to the outside of the post, and so we would have liked to have been at least 20 to three. Yeah. Uh, ended up 17 to three, but. Uh, we knew we knew it was going to be two halves when you're in someone else's stadium. Are there some mistakes at this point of the season that you deem unacceptable at this time, like this far into it, you can't be doing? Well, there's a couple penalties that uh, you know we'll see in the second half that you know just are inexcusable, and and uh, you know any time that we turn the ball over, which you'll see one in the second half, yeah. you know that's that's inexcusable. But uh, you know you've you've got to get better at everything you do, and I think we're improving. Mm -hmm. Well, the clip is back in vogue, apparently. We saw one in the first game of the season, I think, and then two on the first drive from interior linemen. That was kind of yeah, odd. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch it closer on yeah. film. And, you know, you can't hit a guy in the back of the legs, and, you know, perhaps we did. All right, well, second half highlights coming up straight ahead here on Buckeye Football Weekly. Stick with us. Football Weekly getting set for second half action, and a lot can be learned in a halftime session. A lot can be learned in tape prior to a game. Now, you pull some Terry Hepner tape even back from the Miami days, I would imagine, to get some tendencies for this Indiana team. Well, having played Miami in the opener, we were watching mm -hmm. the, his stuff all summer long. And, and so, you know, there was a little bit of that, and he had some things from the guys he added to his staff. And uh, But really, you watch mostly what someone is all about in the last few weeks. We watched their Iowa closely, their Illinois closely, their Wisconsin. That's where we got most of our game plan. And look at what they're becoming right. there, and, and look at what you're trying to become. Uh, and also, Indiana playing on its home field looking for its fourth straight win. That gives you the idea that these guys are not the same Indiana team that you had faced in the past. Well, you know, anytime you have a little change, there's a little reason for uh, excitement, and then there's some proof. They had some victories, and they had some people coming to their stadium, and uh, people giving them respect and so forth. So we knew we were going to walk into a tough situation. Well, and uh, they knew that you'd walk, they'd walk nine up into the box at times and, and try to make you run the football uh, or make it as difficult as possible to run the football. A source of pride, I would imagine, to still be able to get out and try to establish a running game? Yeah, you know, we like to spread it out a little bit different. Here you see it, uh, we're in a little bit of a box formation, and here Troy finds the comeback route. Uh, this is the first drive of the third quarter, which we felt if we could take command of this game and get it up to 24 to three, and, and uh, through a little screen there, you know, we're moving the football down the field, doing doing what we would like to do, crossing midfield, uh, you know, taking the tempo of the half, and, and then uh, unfortunately we have a turnover here, which, you know, just trying to make something happen, really wanted to keep the ball outside right there we would have had about a seven or eight play gain uh, yard gain but it turns into a turnover and I'm not sure exactly when stop progress is yeah. last week when we got a fumble on the one yard line they were calling stop progress uh, in the Michigan State game but whatever it's a three point uh, situation and we come back and go to the ground and this was a good looking drive probably the best looking drive of the entire day there's Antonio hits a big one then Troy flips it out to Antonio again uh, on the option play, and now we're crossing midfield. Well, just chewing up yardage on the ground. I mean, this is one of those uh, you know answer drives, and yeah. the linemen, I don't know what was going on in the huddle, but they took charge. Yeah, they sure did, and here you see Mo Wells. It's great to see him. We really need him to really start stepping in and becoming that good change of pace back. Mo Wells, 26 yards. That's after 18 on the pitman after taking the pitch following a 17-yard pickup. Now Troy, 22 yards away, and he keeps it. He did a great job of getting in the end zone. We were hoping for a little blitz in the red zone. You love to run option against a loaded up box and possible blitz and good read by Troy, and, and uh, that, that was a good tempo drive. No question. You're at 24-10 now, and you got to the 24 that you're looking for and the number you're always looking for uh, on the road or at home. You're at that magic number and still playing D. The loss of nine there for Kudla, and back again now Brandon Mitchell this time playing center field. Yeah, this was great. We put a little bit of pressure on him, and I think he was blinded a little bit when he let this go. And here you see Brandon Mitchell getting a great escort down the sideline, and he goes airborne, and yeah. big play. It's great for our defense. To, and they've been working hard to try to create those turnovers, and it finally happened. Yeah, said he'd be, he'd been saving that move since high school when he played a little receiver. Is that know? right? So wanted to, wanted to, saw the quarterback come and felt threatened, so he yeah. got in. But a big lead, 31 to 10 for Ohio State. Uh, you move the fourth quarter action with this now, and uh, Schlegel, nice tackle there and then Smith takes off running again. Again, you know, they, they feel as if they have to really pursue to stop our option game and Troy does a great job with uh, with good patience and he's coming back and stepping up and throwing that little shallow route to Santonio again across the middle and and you know, they tried to play a little bit of man and got rubbed off and uh, we're down there knocking at the door. Yeah, 26 yards complete on that. 
Pick up another seven to number seven. It's a good job of reading what was going on. We loaded up three into the boundary there and and uh, just did little hitch routes and now we step up and Josh Houston, who's been so solid all year long, yeah. pops it through. Solid enough. Uh, we talk about the 29-yarder he kicked there to make it 34 to 10. Mike mentioned that he missed a 49-yarder, which is the first miss inside 50 this entire season. Yeah. So it's pretty good. It really is, and his kickoffs have been great. There's Jamari O'Neal with the big hit, and I don't know how many touchbacks uh, Josh had, but four or five, and then that good one that forces them to punt, and and uh, this is this is great to see right here. No question about it. Ted Ginn Jr. waited all season for this. A couple are called back, one in this game, one at Michigan State, and here he goes, off to the races. Well, it's, it's great to see, and he's so happy to look around. There's no flags, and yeah. Uh, yeah. we've had way too many penalties on returns, and, and uh, that was an exciting return. Yeah, a lot of people looking around to make sure no flags. Right. 41 to 10, in the, in the box score, that's going to look impressive when people see that. Well, you know, and... and I think that was indicative of the game. Had we not made a couple mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, it was going to be a good, decisive victory, and uh, we're going to have to be better than that. We understand when we go to play Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're an upper division team up at their place. They've had a week off. Uh, Lawrence Maroney's probably the best back in the country. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we got a little better this week, I think, and now we have to get a little bit better next week. A measure of road confidence gained, you think? You can tuck that away? You know, I think it is. You know, we're on the road and, and uh, got the job done and had some adversity with penalties and, mm -hmm. you know, things that didn't go our way. They had a long kickoff return, but we kept them out of the end zone and those kind of things. So uh, we had the they, when they yanked that ball out and took it for a touchdown, that was a little adversity, and we came right back and, and not at home. So you know, I'd like to think it's a little confidence on the road. Was Ted Ginn Jr. moving around the field with more confidence, did it look? Well, you know, he, he flies around all the time. I don't know if he was moving around with more confidence. He, uh, he wants very badly to make good things happen for his team and uh, you know whatever he has to do and sometimes you don't know why he's cutting left or cutting right but then all of a sudden when he's running down the sideline for a touchdown you see why he did that and he's an exciting guy to watch and scoring in all three phases is exciting and fun as well yeah no question defense gets rewarded special teams checks in offense as well 41 10 is what it spells we are back first we have our buckeye profile segment right after this break you want to check in with that steve winner and mike kudler our featured guest